We've all heard stories of professional athletes taking drugs to amp up their performance. In medieval times, it wasn't much different. The world's greatest soldiers, such as the Vikings, also showed signs of drug use. All the Vikings were either hallucinating or having a bloodthirsty trip as they ravaged their way through towns. Nowadays, psychedelics have become way more common. But even in the 90s, most famous rock bands were heavily influenced by LSD. However, the Vikings had to plan their trips with the help of magic mushrooms such as psilocybin. Now, when we say trips, we don't just mean a psychedelic one. The Vikings would go insane with rage as they turned into monsters and would go fully berserk. But do magic mushrooms really help you conquer lands? Welcome to History Unfolded, where we get to the bottom of things and unfold history like never before. You could stop anyone from today's young generation and simply tell them that the Vikings used psychedelics before going on wars. And you'd get laughed at. <laughs> Today, there's research and so much material on how to heal from your repressed traumas using psychedelics. Yet our history tells us that the Vikings were using these same drugs to simply create more trauma for generations to come. Something doesn't quite add up, does it? Well, most people from Scandinavian countries will tell you the origin of the relationship between psychedelics and the Vikings. Just be sure not to offend some people who might still believe in the great and unwavering power of the Vikings. It turns out that not all of these soldiers were fans of bloodshed and misery. That's why when they discovered that psilocybin, the chemical found in shrooms, resulted in altered mental states, it felt like you could go on any journey of your choice. So before getting their armor on, an army of these savage soldiers would either consume the drugs in tea form or simply eat it as it is. Many of them were under the delusion that these so-called wars they would win were only a part of their hallucinations. This could explain why we don't see any signs of long-lasting side effects on the Vikings. In our day and age, any sort of media you see or read about the Vikings will show them never letting their guard down. But the hallucinations were real for many of these young men, but some of the more senior and experienced soldiers knew what they were getting into. There's a myth that's been around since the Vikings, and that's of a dangerous human-like creature existing. The locals would refer to them as berserks. You could say that this was the slender man of their age. There have been many depictions of these creatures, with some resembling a wolf about to shred someone to pieces, and some show a creature of strong stature and immense strength. But most people just ignore these rumors as old tales and myths that were nothing but a play on words. What if we told you that we know who the actual berserks were? Remember we told you that the more experienced Vikings knew exactly what was coming their way? We now know that psychedelics work by altering your entire mental state and can give you seemingly newfound abilities. So when the leaders of the armies of the Vikings made decisions to invade lands and kill thousands along their way, let's just say the kind of armor they put on was different from any other. These so-called berserks were more like a cat hiding behind a lion suit. Some of the Vikings channeled all the rage they had and used psychedelics to make everyone else around them pay for it. Since they could set an intention for the type of psychedelic trip they wished to have, these Vikings would simply imagine fighting for their so-called place in Valhalla. Due to the euphoric and at times violent feelings produced because of the drugs, the Vikings would turn into berserks. Bloodshed eyes, pure rage and violent urges, energy and strength of a godlike being, and they would lead their armies and the victims would not even stay alive and get a proper look at these barbarians. That's why most people still believe in the myth of berserks existing. If someone around you today was acting insane and vengeful, your first thought would be to get help because it would be so obvious that perhaps they were on drugs. But back in the Viking days, it seemed like they had discovered a power like none other and was using it to scare anyone in their way. The violence wasn't just part of their intrinsic nature, but they would perform blood rituals as a motivational speech before a war. These Norse warriors would go into a trance-like state after consuming psilocybin and become disassociative. 
This ritual was performed before every war because the Vikings would feel more strength and their pain tolerance would increase a lot. Since the Scandinavian countries had several fungal plants everywhere, many historians believe that the Vikings knew exactly the results they could get from different plants. When the rumors of berserks going on a killing spree started spreading around, the more scared everyone became. However, now it's been centuries and we finally know the truth. Or do we? In 1784, a priest presented a theory that the reason behind going berserk was not because of psilocybin, but another magic mushroom. These are mostly known as the fly agaric mushrooms and affect all areas of your brain. But unfortunately, this theory didn't last long because it was found out that the fly agaric mushroom was poisonous, although the symptoms still sound familiar to how a berserker would act. Another local mushroom, called Claviceps purpurea, was psychedelic as well and awakened destructive and sadistic impulses in the Vikings. However, all of these theories belong to a pre-Christianity era, so all the locals considered consuming any fungal plant like this as demonic. When modern scientists could get their hands on the lands belonging to these Norse warriors, more information came to light. When the grave of a berserker viking was discovered, scientists found the remains of a drug known as henbane. Henbane was believed to be cursed in much older civilizations because it would drive anyone insane. But we all know by now that for the vikings, insanity was seen in a positive light. More evidence of the vikings using henbane was found when people discovered the grave of a Nordic sorceress in Denmark. It is believed that in the ancient Greek oracles, the elders would use this drug to see into the future. If you have ever heard the stories about the oracle of Delphi, then you must know how the Nordic people would inhale certain fumes to go into a trance. The Vikings were found to be doing the same thing, except they took advantage of the side effects of psychedelics, such as delirium, bloodlust and loss of any inhibitions. In 1903, an ancient ship belonging to the Vikings was discovered in Norway and it had several artifacts dating all the way back to 800 AD. But the most interesting discoveries were the skeletons of two women and a leather bag containing seeds of cannabis. All historians think that one of these women was the Osberg, no queen, whereas archaeologists think that she was also the goddess of love, Freya, according to Norse mythology. But what were the cannabis seeds doing in her possession? It turns out that the Vikings might have been the first ones to bring weed to the Americas. When an old Viking settlement was found, archaeologists found cannabis pollen, and we know that the Vikings would go back and forth between Newfoundland. So should we thank the Vikings for accidentally bringing the cannabis seeds to the Americas?